They got that terror, and it was a complete disaster from there. No way you can defend against that at that time of the game. So it is going to be eternal uh, shrines. shrines, that's right. Uh, infernal shrines. Oh my god, yes. Infernal <laughs> shrines. I mean, there's so many different ways to say it. I mean, it's all the same. It's not my favorite map name, to be honest with you. Well, it's actually a pretty interesting map, though. I, I do like the mechanics on this map, the objective to it, and the fact that you got to deal with these punishes, which really change up a team fight in a big way. And about the draft, I mean, look, there's Mercs, there's Goatman, and there's Tiger Dudes. We'll talk about that later. The Tiger Dudes <laughs> respawn minions, the Goatmen uh, do well against structures. There's three capture points, though, and this is not the PTR patch. This is the patch where you need very few of these to actually trigger. And when you get it, it's a win or lose. If you have 30, they have 29, guess what? You win, they lose. It doesn't descale it yep. or anything like that. Nope. You get a full, healthy Punisher like you see. You get three different types of Punishers, Molten, Frozen, and, and Arcane. Arcane. Yes. And, and uh, this draft is going to be all about AoE damage. It's going to be about Johanna. Yeah. It's going to be about Leoric. It's going to be potentially about Kael'thas. Very well be about Kael'thas. Even Valor as well. Like, it's all about clearing those skeletons as fast as you can. One win on this map for MVP. DK has this map unplayed. Well, uh, that's kind of the common trend. I guess it's the newest map, so it came out during this tournament. And uh, I guess both sides have had, really had a long time to figure it out, so it should be actually a very interesting game. I'm still like, uh, I, I do love the Punisher, but man, does he change up the game uh, in terms of like team fighting, because he will choose heroes over anything else. He will jump on them and stun them, which can really open up the initiating and, and really I uh, uh, be a very favorable team fight for the team with the Punisher. That's right. Uh, now we're going to jump into this draft right away, it appears. So no more bugs, no more delays. No more bugs, no more breaks, Wolf. It's all about the game. That's right. So this draft, I think we might see a unique one. Abathur not very strong on this map. No. Uther I... is somewhat strong, but I think it's going to be about banning Leoric and Johanna is some of the most important early picks or bans. Leoric, jo Johanna, Valar, I mean, Kel'Thas. Zeratul is also pretty weak on this map, in my opinion. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't see it. I didn't expect to see a Zeratul on this map, that's for sure. Kael'thas, we'll, we might see for the first time on this map. He's so insanely good at clearing. If a game goes late, which is rare on this map, but if it does, Sergeant Chain Hammer. Bomb, Sergeant Hammer is also an incredible Fantastic pick. Fantastic at level 10, you know, Napalm Strike going to be clearing that out in one shot. You can also position Sergeant Hammer in such a way to be in between kind of these crevices where you can't be attacked by melee heroes and you're in siege range of actually killing those skeletons. Sure. You do often run the risk of someone like Kel'Thas knocking you up and just bursting you down with range damage. Like, you could die to a mage, mm. but you're not going to die to a, a melee assassin. You're not going to die to a tank. You're not going to get pulled in by Johanna because no. it's a safe little crevice there, a little nook, if you will. If we see Sergeant Hammer, you guys will know exactly what I mean. And if you've played Hero League on this map, you know exactly what I mean. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of strong range damage picks that are good on this map. You know, Kael'thas, Jaina. It's a, it's a big map. You know, AoE is going to be favorable, but not the most important thing of all. It's all going to be about team fighting for these things as well. It is one of the objectives that is, is such a big game changer compared to a lot of the other ones. Like, it, this, the moment you have a Punisher, like, it, it changes the game. The other team has to be so defensive. They've got to be hiding behind their walls, trying to bait out the jump from the Punisher to deep uh, damage him down. Sure. The Punisher doesn't have a lot of health. It doesn't scale as well as uh, the Immortals uh, or, for example, Haunted Mines Golems. But let's jump into this draft. Finally, it's ready. And it is going to be first banned for DK, of course, as they lost the previous set. That's right. Let's see how they take advantage of this one as well. Um, I don't know if we're going to see that Aberthur Illidan combination again this series, but I think, they, I think they're going to go back to more of a normal style this time. I think so. Abathur Band, actually not the strongest hero on this map, but they are scared of it, and they are just going to take it away. It's it's still a, a big map, so I can't respect the fact that they could like push a lane while they do the kind of team fighting and uh, harassment and pulling the teams out of like a, a lane so they do get that gradual experience lead. Abathur's spikes are, to be honest, not that bad at killing the skeletons. One of the key things that a hero can do on this map is blast that zone to do damage to heroes and kill skeletons at the same time, like Kael'thas' Flame Strike or Jaina's Blizzard. Um, you know, those are the kind of damages where you can literally damage heroes that are trying to get the skeletons and steal the skeletons away from them in the exact same spell. Well, let's see how they start things off here. DK does have the floor. They can pick whatever they want. They can start with the Nuth of them. Not a bad choice in this situation. If they take Uther, though, Black is almost 100% going to go Jaina and Johanna. Or, excuse me, Johanna and Leoric. And I think that Black 
will likely go Uther into Leoric from this uh, first pick, Johanna. Because both of those heroes are insanely strong on this map, considered to be broken, in fact, in uh, Korean Heroes of the Storm. They could still go, you know, Uther, Jainer, though. Like, Jainer's still fantastic, still, like, one of the, the highest damage uh, heroes in the game. So Blizzard always going to be clearing the lane as well, clearing the, the skeletons, the guardians. So we'll find out what Black wants to do. They're, they very rarely st step out of the ordinary. They, they do have their style set in stone at this point. I do like Sign on Leoric a lot. I think the question is, do you want Jaina or do you want Uther? And they take Uther. So the Leoric Uther is what they're going to go for. This does allow Team DK to pick up Jaina. If they want. Let's see if they want to try things a little different on this map there. Leoric does make a lot of sense. I do like Leoric. We haven't, seen, we haven't seen as much Leoric as I was expecting. Let's see. I think DK probably leaned more towards Arthas in the end of all things. Well, it's funny because um, in the Korean scene, with this patch, it's going to change with the, when the PTR patch goes live. In Hero League, if you spawn on this map, literally you watch every single hero go to either Jonah or Johanna or Leoric at the front. Everyone's like, oh, okay, we got this. Yeah, right. Those are considered to be like broken on this map. And so if they allowed one team to get both, it could have gotten out of hand. Certainly. I think they want Jaina here, but they're going to take Bala and Bala. Bala. All right. All right. That means they can't get their, he their healer banned, which has been a problem yeah. for them in the draft before. I think that's probably what they're afraid of, considering they don't have they, their pool of healers is is weak compared to what we see from Black. So it does make sense that they go for the mouth one like pick earlier than they normally would. And Vala just a great, well-rounded hero and great at uh, clearing out AOE. Most likely going to be going for that uh, multi-shot build, so she can uh, have extra range and damage. All right, Tyrael ban. That might bode into a Kael'thas pick. We'll see. It could very well. Also, SC's Tyrael is insane, so I totally understand that as well. Yeah, it's certainly going to stop SC from doing that. Butcher territory. and Arthas, they take the Butcher a great Whoa. pick on this map, and they take Arthas away from SC huh. after the Tyrael ban. So who Instant. does Arthas play, or rather, who does SC play now? Buridan? Look He's not the, comfortable there. Look at the melee on Black right now. They love their melee compositions, but man, we have seen DK take them apart before in this sort of scenario. Notice the camera goes to SC. I Who is he going to play now? Muradin, I think, is the obvious choice. I but think it has to be Muradin. And I, if, if I had a choice for those guys, what, what's, what, what's, with what's, what's left, left over, yeah. it'd be... Muradin, Kael'thas? Muradin, Sylvanas. Muradin, Sylvanas. Because we do have that Vala already, so I think they can invest in a specialist. And I think it would be Sylvanas if they get there. We'll see exactly where they want to go. Black still has to pick up their sort of range damage as well, which could very well be a Kalthus. That's true. Can you imagine the lockdown on that team if the Kalthus was there with gravity laps as well? Oh my god. It's ridiculous. And then Chain Bomb comes up. You've got everybody locked down. Lamb to the Slaughter on level 20. <laughs> Chain Bombs and everybody Chain bombs. dies. So you got Howling Blast. You got the stun from Uther. There's, There's your, your Sylvie. All right, Sylvie. Now, I think it comes down, comes down to a tank. They need a secondary tank to peel off that amount of melee. I think it's got to be Murden. He's the best peeler tank for for who's left for this type of composition. I don't think there's really any other option that's going to deal with melee nearly as well. Right? Nubarak is just not a good pick here. Nubarak has totally fallen out of the Korean meta. We've not seen him picked a single time today. He just doesn't have a place in this kind of situation either. Uh, even if he was relevant, I'd have to say. This is when the Diablo pick comes in. <laughs> Not yet. We'll wait for the next patch. <laughs> I think that uh, Muradin is the easy pick here, but DK is waiting for the last second before yeah. they decide. Yeah. Everyone is okay with it first. SC not as comfortable on this hero, and there it is. There it is. All right. This makes a lot of sense. I do like it a lot. Black looking pretty happy with this situation there. And they're going to finish Sergeant it off Hammer. with Sergeant Hammer. Sergeant Hammer going to be used in that position we talked about, as well as being able to split push quite well in those, uh, in those team fights. You know, if, if they lose... For example, the um, Punisher. Sorry, I couldn't think of the name for that. That big, scary thing that runs across the map and kills everybody. Absolutely. If they lose the Punisher, they can have Sergeant Hammer push a lane by herself, or they can have her shell out extra damage to help burst down the Punisher from a safe distance. Yeah, they, they can really deal with it pretty quickly. Unless the Punisher jumps on top of the Sergeant Hammer, then it gets a little messy. Sergeant Hammer is almost like an auto attack mage. You know, such ranged damage, but it's basically auto attacks and napalm. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go into Eternal Conflict, what could be our final map of the night. we we'll see if Black can turn around and bring us to Game 7.
Welcome to Infernal Shrines. Going into set six, DK versus MVP Black here at the Grand Finals. Winner will move on to BlizzCon, and DK is on match point. That's right, they lost the last game. Sitting on a match point, just kind of getting outdrafted. This time around, though, I do like what I see. They're very, much more well-rounded, more standard sort of picks, but DK have won with this kind of composition before. Okay. Just taking an early wave here, all moving together. The Butcher is the biggest threat. So yeah. you can just, from an insane range, charge in uncontested and grab somebody. Very interestingly, though, DK are the ones actually with the roaming, and, and the Butcher kind of just soloing up top against the Muradin. He wants to get those fresh meat stacks first, it looks like, and then uh, roam a little bit later. And he will fight a burden quite well 1v1, especially once he starts to get those stacks. We'll see if SC can deny him. Look at that. Look how much damage he puts oh, on yeah. so quickly. He's got so much lifesteal as well. Like he's he's always gonna be out damaging, out surviving the Muradin. It's all gonna be about the rotations there. If either of them wanna kill. Just great rotations again from, from DK. They can't they know they can't allow Sergeant Hammer to set up shop outside their towers. So they keep rotating down, they're clearing the lane and coming up back to middle. It's like Sylvana actually taking up the role up top here. Merton didn't really want to team up, uh, sit there against the Butcher, but hold that thought. A little bit more aggression coming from MVP Black here. Yeah, not able to find anything with it just yet. But the top shrine, the first shrine, is active. And this is one of the most terrifying things on this map is the first shrine because it will give the winner a massive lead. And here we go, 30 skeletons to win the Punisher. Now we already see MVP Black contesting and controlling. Notice that crevice I was talking about. Saki can sit back there uncontested. He's got the mines to back him up. And That's look right. at him, you know, just pulling out that damage. A lot of poking damage here. Kyochan actually getting pretty low already at half HP. Sergeant Hammer not even really in range right now. Yeah. All right, well, huge Howling Blast, hitting crazy moving only. Oh, luck down, oh. taking a lot of damage. He just got condemned into a stun, and down goes Kyocha as well. And this fight turned around real fast. Sign running for his life as well. He should be out of oh, alive. The oh, the stun, they don't have any follow-up. <laughs> uh, nothing for the entangle there, but they're just going to be claiming the first Punisher, hands down, a great team fight, and they're going to get a lot of uh, experience lead for this. Yeah, not to mention the possibility of actually killing uh, a hero if they make even one wrong step. They have to sit behind the towers, like you said, and yep. kind of wait. Kind of going to bait out the punishes, and there you go. Baits it out into the uh, the fort, and the fort will help damage it down. And they should be in a pretty comfy place, but it looks like they're going to lose a couple of towers for it and a lot of experience down a level already. Yeah, Mortar Punisher is just going to do so much damage to the wave, and jumping again here on Sake. Not going to find any kills, but like you said, that EXP lead is massive because during all of this, uh, we had Muradin pushing the bot lane, um, you know, fighting with Kyocha. So SC getting a, a decent EXP lead here and a massive lead already. The first Punisher is the most important because that starts the snowball thing, and then the second Punisher is easier to take, and then the third Punisher, if you if you win the second one, is almost just certainly for free. That's right, especially if it's going to be like level seven to level six, like it's going to be a huge advantage in terms of talent tier for DK. And they're working towards that now. Already up pretty much an entire level. Yeah. About to hit seven as well. Sylvan is really helping to push this down. Sniper picking that hero up. A great pick, especially when you have a lead like this. Certainly though, down goes the tower. Oh, Kyochan getting very low as well. Has to be so careful, especially when you know the, the next objective is moments away. He died pretty unnecessarily in that last fight as well. A little bit too forward, not as careful. Now they're going to go for the neutral Goatman here at the bottom, and they're going to take them. If they can push this lane with Sylvanas one more time before the next Shrines is up, this is going to put a strong push. Saki down here for that reason, though. Uh, kind of the counter to Sylvanas with a push like this. That's right. Shouldn't be too hard to deal with. Uh, both towers have gone already as well, so it's not going to be much experience for it, but just a little bit more presence in the lane, a little bit more pushing power. Level 7 is up now for DK, excuse me, for MVP Black as well. There it is. Next objective being activated in just a moment's time. It's going to be in the middle there. Looks like DK will be the ones out of position this time. All right, let's see. They, they came late to the party last time, but was able to turn that fight around. Sake again at the back, but not in the safest location. He is Kyochan. pinged here. Kyochan in the middle of nowhere. He can take a lot of damage once again, getting chipped down. Still not a bad place for MVP Black, though. Yeah. Ooh, 
careful, careful movements here by DK. Keeping an even trade here on these skeletons. Kyocha comes up at the front. Is going to go for that skeletal swing. Again, keeping it even. And they're actually going to retreat back here. This is another opportunity for DK to get a lead in the skeletons. They're up five skeletons. If they hit 31st, it's huge. Uh -oh. Kyocha taking a lot of damage. He has to leave. So much damage. He's going to Wraith walk out of here. Condemn pulling everyone just a little bit closer. All they need is three more, and it looks like they got it. They got it. So it's going to be an arcane one this time around. Arcane the best at pushing minion waves. Just by putting oh. those on the ground. And oh my god, that Howling Blast! Oh. Down goes Arthas. Kyocha will fall as well. It looks like Noblesse on the chase. He's so out of position. He will be going down no matter what. Down he goes. The Punisher is still very healthy, though, so he could be getting a couple of towers, even a fort for this. Oh, man, huge. Again, a two for none win here for DK. Oh, look at that. Kyocha needs to get out of here. He's way too far forward. He could actually be jumped on as well. Sake, very low as well. Uh, the Punisher jumped on top of him, and down goes the middle forward. And look at the experience lead. Up two levels. Level 10 is DK. Oh, oh. man, Sake gets jumped on again. He's the worst here to be hit by this. And look at those arcane... Uh, Mario Fireball Spinners, man, they're taking out the turrets so, so fast. Look at how quickly that turret's going to fall. Oh, yeah, both turrets going to go down, and it could even be a three-level lead by the end of this push. Absolutely ridiculous there. No one's ever come back from a three-level lead. Look at this, they're going to go for the keep now. How confident is DK in this game? They have their heroics. All of them are online. They're all the exception of Wheeling Arrow. Kyocha. Oh, Kyocha, what are you doing? What? Going, what is he doing? Giving up life in the tournament winning game for DK. they got to be so careful oh, how they Oh, man, this. the throws here. Arthas goes down as well. They're falling apart. They really are, and this keep will fall. And they might even be able to slowly push down another keep they're not going to be able to go core. The core itself could defend them <laughs> at this point. But yeah, they're just simply too left. It's seven minutes in. There's no way they're coring this early. But what a lead already. An MVP already looking defeated. Such yeah. a bad place to be. We saw a view of lockdown there just briefly. Someone who's been so frustrated this entire tournament back. They're going to go back here. They're going to Hearthstone to get their mana up for the next shrine. Now, if MVP pushes it real quick, they might be able to get their heroics before the next shrine, which is what they need to do. And I think that they will just be able to do it. They have to do it at this rate. I mean, they're already to that core in mid. They lost their keep in that second Punisher push. I don't think I've ever seen it so aggressive before, but they managed to do it because of how convincingly they've been winning this early game. And MVP Black also just throwing those two heroes away. They threw those heroes away. Kyocha should not have been that far forward. He is trying to push the lane here, which is understandable, so they can get 10. Well, let's see what they can do here. They're down two levels. They do have those heroics, though. I think they have to fight, right? They have to try for it. A Punisher might actually just end the game at this point. You know, it's, it's just going to give them too much of an EXP lead. He won't be able to kill the core, but he's certainly going to allow them to push down another keep, which would be too much. Kyocha is going to go ahead and Wraith walk in. Wow. Well, that's going to give up his escape. Oh, man. And he gets so, so low. Down he goes. Butcher running in, though. Oh. oh, look at that wailing arrow hitting everybody here. Divine shield on the Butcher. He's trying to put that damage off onto Sniper. So he pushes the next target as well. Walk down, going to get out of here. He's so out of position. Sign. They're going to go for Sign. I guess they might as well. They can deal with the tank at this point. Yeah, they're just pushing it back. And notice the oh. skeleton count. Goodbye, Sign. Four skeletons to go here, and they will get it with just another Condemn. And this Punisher, what's it going to be? It looks like it's oh going to be the God. Ice Punisher. He wants to claim the life of Sake as well. Sake on the retreat. He should escape, but this Ice Punisher will push the bot lane, or Frozen Punisher, I should say, to be more correct. It's going to be uh, it's going to be at least a fort. I wouldn't be surprised if they get another keep for it. They're up another tier level. Uh, sorry, a uh, talent tier advantage. Like, they can really, they've, they're so far ahead. Yeah. It's absolutely insane at this point. Even Burning Rage here on Noble S. So you can help push the lanes even faster. And it looks like they're even looking to try to catch somebody. I wouldn't even be surprised if SC tries to jump over the wall. <laughs> Not even kidding you. All right, <laughs> there goes do. the Punisher onto Sake. Again, Sake cannot be taking Punisher damage. Oh. And here comes all the ice, which means they all have to move. They and this means so there. much push. Oh, some of them got locked down as well, but no follow-up. They're DPSing down the gate now. Now they're going to go for it. Oh, Plus man, shield. there goes Blessed Shield and the Condemn. Immortal, uh, Divine Shield rather keeps Immortal, or keeps the uh, Butcher Immortal. Kyocha will go down with Kyocha. no more auto. He's so low. Oh, yeah. they, they chase him hard, though, and this just gives another chance for re-engage for MVP. SC getting low as well, though. They might have to actually pull back and yep. give up the keep. They're going to have to let that keep uh, survive. 
for a few more seconds at least. I mean, their their pushes are out of control at this point. MVP that was, Black and moving on the map again, very confident with the damage they did to uh, to DK in that fight. That was Kyocha all the way. He finally had that perfect peel. They're gonna grab uh, Jaehyun here. But SC is here to help peel this as well. This is bold. I don't know if they should be doing this. Only three of them here right now. They're gonna put, burst down the Butcher though. Wailing Arrow hits several members and they have no escape now. Kyocha will finally be able to escape. And Bala on the chase. Can they stun Sake? And yes, he turns around at the worst possible moment. Can Sign save him with the Howling Blast? Oh, no, he cannot. I think they're all going down at this point. They're going to be chasing down Sign next. Sign trying to buy time, but it looks like they're going to go straight for that keep. And this is just getting further and further out of control for MVP Black. Safety first here. They're not going to core it. It's still only 10 and a half minutes here, but they will get another keep. And Sake should not have turned around at that moment. That was the worst possible time. That's exactly when he was going to get stunned. I can't believe they followed They followed DK into that kind of situation. Down three levels. And DK collapsed on top of them. They're down a talent tier right now. They, they're so disadvantaged in a fight. They should be kind of to hold back and try and recoup and push the lanes out, get that experience uh, under control. And Moonlight, they're about to be down two talent tiers in just and a moment here. Man, DK can taste BlizzCon right now. They are so close to winning this game. It's gonna take one more bad fight, one more Punisher, and they might even be able to close it out. Three levels up. And here comes the oh, Shrine. They found him. They found him. Oh, they found Noblesse. Noblesse, though, is the one that wants to be found. He is the tankiest of the team here. How is DK going to approach this? They have so far ahead. They have such an advantage. MVP Black know they have to fight for this, though. Looks like they're going to wait for the Heroics to come online. Blessed Shield is the only one that's active at this moment in time, so they're just going to try to zone until the Heroics are up. And you can see Condemn will instantly wipe a wave. Then it'll be refreshed because he went Condemn build, and he could grab the second one. Look, he's going to grab another one. Absolutely ridiculous here. Looks like we're going to see the fight initiate those sign going down so quickly. They're going to disengage now. They're going to peel back. He just doesn't have as much health as you would normally have at this stage of the game. They're three levels down. Two more Guardians, and they have it. And they're going to get this in, uh, in this wave here. I think MVP should have just let this go. They're actually going to come in here. Kyocha oh. getting way, way, way too low. Now they're fighting underneath the Punisher now. Okay, the Punisher's the gonna King. walk by, March of the Black King comes in, Does down nothing. goes Leoric, and this is going to be the beginning of the end as another Condemn walks down three members here. MVP Black looking like they've given up here. It's gonna be an entire it's team wipe. It's a wipe, and that now is Punisher gonna be game. is pushing this top lane, the only lane left over with the keep, and this should be game, this should be core. Noble has seized BlizzCon, he sees it, he sacrificed himself <laughs> for this team fight. He did. And that is going to be game. There is no coming back from this one. The There's, Punisher will continue to punish this look down. Look at that, they're going straight for the core from here. They know they've won it. Sake even getting caught once more by a Punisher. There are three Siege minions here, as well as a full level 16 talented team. And DK have done what no one thought was possible in Korea or even in the world. They have defeated what many thought was the best team in the world, and they have done it with flying colors. MVP goes for one last fight. Oh, Down goes Bala. They're going to try. It looks like they might be able to. Are they too hasty on this core? Sniper is so low, but he's doing so much damage. Uh, Down he goes. SC could fall as well, and maybe they did get a bit too hasty. They survived 44%. But what can they do as uh -oh. a counter -measure? Are they going to get Jaehyun, maybe? Jaehyun might be able to go oh, Blessed down. Shield trying to save him, but the slow continues. Can they chase him? This could be huge. This could be the counter play that they need. Oh, like Here comes the gonna charge. He's going to grab Jaehyun. Down he goes. Oh, and at level 17, agree. that's a huge, huge death timer. It's a long time, but they got to go through a fort. they got to go through a keep before they even get close to the core of DK. Noble but S should not get ahead of himself. And actually, Kyocha is going up there to try to chase him. I guess they kind of opened up the game in a way. They're, they're back on the same tier level now. Uh, and so DK many go way too far ahead of themselves. I was just, there's so much leftover unlocked experience to be had here with all these forts still alive. They can grab so much EXP, which scales into the late game. They've actually now nearly leveled up to even up the being at level 17. They're about now three fourths of a level behind, whereas that before there were three levels behind. Yeah. Oh, they're, they still got a way to go before they've really even up the game. And the problem is their core is sitting at 44% HP and they've only got one keep remaining on the map. So they're constantly being pushed in every lane but the top. The problem with this team comp is that the Howling Blasts are not there. You know, he just snuck in the Howling Blast. They need to they have. They need to have initiate. Howling Blast is the only initiate they have besides uh, Hammer of Justice on the team. And Hammer of Justice is, of course, a melee initiate. It's a melee stun. Well, they got that Ruthless Onslaught as well from Lockdown, but he, they got to have Divine Shield active, and they got to find the right target for it, which is always the problem. And look at how carefully DK is in the place. They're, They're going to push every lane. They're like, all right, all right. We got a little carried away there. We got to, we got to wind it back there. 
they're still in such a heavy favor to win this game. If they win a the slight team fight on the map, if they get another Punisher, if the lanes just push onto the core, it's already so damaged. There's so many ways that DK can win this game. It's just about playing it safe until then. Gyocha got a lot of these skeletons early on. There's a Blessed oh. Shield, and Divine Shield keeps the Butcher alive. Is this the comeback? <laughs> Is this the comeback? Noble S taking a lot of damage from that Drain Hope, and now MVP poised to maybe take their first Punisher this game. SC trying to deny that, but it's just not going to happen. They just got to let it go, I think. Uh, Sylvanas was so key in, in these kind of fights, and she got blown up at the worst time. We see SC on the other side working towards that core, but he's got to be careful. He cannot afford to go down in this situation. Yeah, they might want to try to go for a backdoor after the Punisher comes up if they can actually sneak it. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, though. They are going to defend the Punisher. Again, crazy moving gets caught. Oh, he's got to be so careful here, especially with uh, Sergeant Hammond not far behind. Listen, they are barely even ahead in this game when it comes to EXP. They're now actually even on levels. This is a scary place to be. Uh, they cannot play this like it's five minutes ago. No, they can't. Oh, double stun, and lockdown's nearby. They actually got the moving siege tank as well, so that's gonna allow them to push this so hard right now. And this is oh. an arcane punisher which does so much damage to anything that does not move. They're in a horrible place right now. All of a sudden, things turned around in a big way. And look at this, arcane, uh, the punisher is gonna go down here underneath the core, so MVP Black should be able to turn around from here. I don't know if they wanna actually push the issue, but it looks like they will. This is uh, a very bold move. move. Do we they wanna do what DK did? Exactly, they wanna make the same mistake because at this late game, you know, you could die from a mistake like this. Funny as it is, when when DK tried to go for the kill, they were at level 17. It's only one level different now. That's how much MVP has come back in this game. And, and all it took was one bad fight, but here we go. Sign actually underneath the core here. He oh, he's even just so, so low. He gets Divine Shielded. He's zoning really well. And coming back to life with his heroic, they are actually just slowly trying to push down this this core. It's like they actually want to just try and take it here. SC right at the back. He's going to get charged up here. Uh oh, that Blessed fight. Shield! Yeah, oh, look oh. at that, though. March of the Black King doing Keep a lot for him. He needs to come back and drain. Down goes Sergeant Hammer, though. This could be the big turning point here. Sign going to be the next to go down. Uh oh, this is really, really bad Kyocha. here for MVP. Oh, Kyocha. He's going to turn around. Looks like they're going to go straight to the core here. It looks like it. Lockdown is going to go up into the front. <laughs> And he will try to outlast this with lifesteal, but it's not going to happen. Crazy moving, nearly went down as well. Are they going to try to base trade? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Got against a 44% core. Ridiculous game and a ridiculous turning point from MVP Black. They almost had the turnaround, but then they sat underneath the core. It's kind of absurd the way it's just going to end here, but looks like we are going to see DK take this tournament and win a trip to BlizzCon. That they will. They definitely have the advantage with this core race. GG, BlizzCon. Congratulations, it says. Please win, BlizzCon, says Sake. In the chat, GG. That is it, DK with the upset. They will win.